Hello and welcome back to my channel, Deku Fanfic. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the movie part of our series, What If Villain Deku Did Multiversal Travel? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Lord Wolf from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. When Worlds Collide Part 1 Echo, what I've been working on instead of apotheosis. Rule number one of the multiverse, anything is possible. Rule number two of the multiverse, things are not always as they appear. Rule number three of the multiverse, it is extremely dangerous, so stay out of it. For the love of all that is holy, stay the F out of the multiverse. However, if you do end up lost in the multiverse, it is extremely important that you find a friend. Hopefully someone you can trust, someone you might be very familiar with. Izuku Midoriya panted as he almost collapsed on the bridge he was running across. His fatigue was slowly catching up with him, but he had to keep going. Looking around he spotted a bunch of cars that looked recently abandoned. Moving quickly he looked for any civilians that might need rescue. He had to keep going no matter what. From a nearby building three people observed the boy's movements. There he is. The first older more mature voice spoke as they watched their target on the bridge. He's all alone. A technological generated voice spoke next. This is the perfect time to get one for all. I get first crack at him. The more manic excited one of the group said. That would be unwise you lunatic. The second one argued back. It's three of us and one of him. Shut up pickles. I want to prove something first and test my arms before I go back home. The younger spat. Let him go. The older said calmly. He wants a chance, we'll let him have it. Their target moved across the bridge checking the cars for any stray civilians. All right hero boy, let's go. The crazy one leaped off the top of the building. He quickly made his way towards the young hero chuckling madly as he moved. Izuku braced himself as the bridge started to shake with him on it. He watched as various metal claws tore through the concrete, flipping the cars all over the place. This had to be another villain sent by all for one. Once a hole was created he finally found out what the claws were attached to as a long mechanical tentacle extended out from the smoke and dust. Three more appeared making four in total as a figure could be seen at the center of them emerging from that cloud. The villain was dressed in a tight-fitting black jumpsuit with a dark green oversized hoodie loosely draped over him. He slid his black tinted goggles up to a head of shaggy dark green hair revealing dot 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 his own freckled face. What? Izuku whispered to himself as his doppelganger smirked. Hello Deku. The other him said mirthfully. What kind of trick is this? Izuku demanded. It's no trick. The tentacles lifted the villain off the ground as he chuckled. Allow me to introduce myself. He bent over in the air to bow. The name's Izuku Midoriya, but you can call me. Octopus. He then began pointing at his mechanical arms. This is Grabby, Squeezy, Choki, and Kevin. He listed off. Boys, this is Deku. I'm so confused right now. Deku said aloud. He knew he wasn't eating or sleeping while hunting after villains lately, but this hallucination seemed really vivid. Let me put this in terms your tiny brain can understand. Octopus cleared his throat. I'm bad Izuku and you're good Izuku. He sneered at him. You're goody little two shoes. He was cut off when Deku attacked, but a swipe from the tentacles halted him. Oh, are we starting? More swings from those robotic arms put Deku on the run. We're gonna have some fun. This villain version laughed as he tore through the cars on the bridge. Izuku ducked to evade a metal arm aiming for his head. He was caught by surprise when another one of the claws blindsided him from the right sending the young hero's body tumbling into the side of a bus, knocking it over. Octopus's mechanical arm stomped across the bridge after him, smashing into a car's engine and forcing it explode. Get up bitch, I'm not done with you. Several black tentacles emerged from the hole as Izuku stepped out his black whip quirk extending out from his back. Looks like we got competition. This villain Izuku mumbled to his own tentacles. Who are you? Izuku shouted over at him. I told you already. The villain smirked as he lifted an abandoned car and threw it at his other self. I'm you. A better you actually. Izuku dodged the attack and used his stored up energy from the third's quirk Fa Jin to charge towards him. This villain version of himself saw the attack and did nothing as his arms were quick enough to pull him out of harm's way. Spotting a truck carrying cement columns he grinned wildly and had his arms pick one up and bring it down on the young tired hero. Whoa. Izuku moved swiftly underneath his other self, frantically dodging these aggressive mechanical claws. He leaped away just in time as one used the column like a club to swing at him, knocking some cars off the bridge in the process. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
His arms were moving swifter and even more furiously. Izuku's danger sense kept warning him, but he was still not fully used to this quirk and was having difficulty keeping up with six dangerous arms intent on doing him harm at once. Plus, the fatigue was wearing himself thin. He tried using Black Whip to tie the arms up, but these things were strong enough to rip through them. Come on, come on, come on. The villain version kept taunting him as he attacked. There's one thing I can do. Midoriya noticed this other self was able to follow his location even when he was a distance away and deduced that those goggles he wore had some heat-seeking tech or motion tracking. He figured a way to use it to catch him off guard. Releasing smoke from his body he activated his other newly unlocked quirk, covering a whole section of the bridge in vapor. Oh please. The octopus smirked and used the thermal vision in his goggles to spot the young hero trying to sneak up from the right. Two of his arms lashed out like a whip and knocked him back over the side of the bridge. I fought a one-for-all user in my world, so I've seen all these tricks Deku. The hero Izuku used Black Whip to grapple the side of the bridge and with his strength he slingshot himself back at Octopus Izuku. He missed by several yards going over the laughing villain's head, only to dive under the bridge and use his momentum to swing himself back around even faster. Okay that's a new one. The octopus remarked as he turned his head just in time to see two weathered dirty boots about to plant themselves in his back. His arms couldn't react quickly enough and he was sent tumbling across the bridge from the collision. The villain landed unconscious, goggles cracked and his six tentacles falling uselessly on the cement. Izuku went to go investigate and find out who this doppelganger was when a wall of spikes rose up blocking his paths. That's just like Chisaki's quirk. He remembered the power of overhaul very well. Impressive boy. A voice called. Midoriya turned and faced another newcomer at the other end of the bridge. This one was bigger than him, dressed in a metal suit of advanced technological armor with a green hooded cape adorning it. You're a lot more adept at using one for all than I thought you'd be. Who are you? Izuku demanded while prepared for another fight. I'm four years older than you so you probably don't recognize the voice. The armor-clad man reached up and removed his mask. Izuku was once again shocked to see his own face, only with slightly narrower eyes and zero baby fat, but his green eyes, facial structure and freckles was undeniable. I'll make this easier for you. Call me Doom. The now-named villain placed his mask back on. What do you two want from me? Izuku asked cautiously. The one with the tentacles. He just wanted to fight you. Doom explained. I on the other hand am here for your quirk, one for all. Izuku barely had time to blink when this armored villain suddenly appeared in front of him, gauntlet-covered hand outstretched to grab his face. His danger sense got him moving away before his mind even processed it. Stubborn. Just like me. Doom sighed. Let me have the quirk Izuku. Let me have it and I'll kill this world's all for one for you before I leave. And what would you do with it? Izuku landed on a truck. I'd be able to rule my world. Unchallenged. The armored villain. I don't expect you to understand my reasoning nor will I explain it to a naive child version of myself. With a wave of his hand the vehicle that Izuku was standing on was lifted up into the air along with every other car on the bridge. Black and green sparks danced across the man's fingers as he made a gripping motion. Metallurgy plus compaction. The cars were torn apart and compressed around the boy forming a giant spherical prison. While that was happening on the other side of the wall, the third member of this little villainous alliance approached the still unconscious octopus Izuku. Pathetic the digital distorted voice remarked disdainfully. Such a brilliant mind and brilliant invention wasted on a petty, obsessed maniac. The arms suddenly started to twitch as they were taken over by an outside influence. All right then, Grabby, Squeezy, Choky, Kevin, Bernie, and Mr. Saw. You boys are working for me now. Izuku managed to kick his way out of the metal prison and launched himself at the one who called himself Doom. The armor-clad villain waved his hand and generated a force field that deflected the boy's attack. Multiple quirks. Just like, the young hero realized. All for one. Doom finished for him. My version of that bastard's quirk is incomplete though. He looked at his own hand and thought, something I'm still trying to rectify in my world. He pointed that hand at the boy and fired a beam of green energy at him that Izuku swiftly avoided. If he is all for one I can't let him touch me. Deku thought, he might be able to steal it. His own thoughts were interrupted when a set of metal claws reached out to grab him from behind. Oh no, not him again. He kicked the mechanical tentacles away and faced his other villain self, but was surprised to see the one called Octopus dangling unconscious in the middle of his robotic arms while said arms seemed to be operating without him. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Someone spoke, sounding again an awful lot like himself. Looking up Izuku spotted something very odd being carried by one of those claws. The machine set it gently down on the ground. A three-foot-tall cylindrical black metal container that looked strikingly similar to that evil skull-faced life support mask that all for one wore, only this one had a transparent dome on top, containing a brain filled with green liquid. The one who impressed All Might so much that he gave you his quirk. Izuku detected a hint of resentment in that tone, despite the voice being clearly produced by a computer. My name is Izuku Midoriya, founder, leader and strategist of the Brotherhood of Evil. You will refer to me as the Brain. Thank you for the distraction, Doom said from behind him. Izuku quickly found himself bound by green fibers from the villain's cape. He tried to rip himself free, but these fibers were very durable. 
Octopus's metal arms wrapped around him to reinforce his entrapment, squeezing so tight that he could feel his ribs start to break under the force. Ooh, my head. Octopus Izuku groaned as he started to wake up. What happened? What? He noticed his arms were not responding to his mental commands. What the fuck is happening? Teletech. The brain supplied. My greatest invention. Controlling machines and computers through brain waves. I saved the best version for myself. You bastard. The multi-armed villain yelled at him as he attempted to pull on his tentacles. These are my arms. Mind. Hush breath. I'm just borrowing them. The brain argued. Brain. Give him back control. Doom ordered while keeping a tight hold on Izuku. What's the matter Doom? Don't you trust me? The bodiless villain said coyly. You know the answer to that. Doom glared down at the container. Spoiled sport. The brain released his control over Octopus's arms. You little shit. The mad villain cursed and tried to crush the small metal cylinder that held the squishy gray matter. His robotic arm was stopped by Doom's metallurgy quirk. We still need him, you fool. The tall armored villain said. Fucking fine. The octopus pouted. Looks like me, but speaks like Kakan. Izuku noted as he struggled to move. The robotic arms turned him around to face Doom. The villain took Izuku's hero mask off his face. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about this. Doom apologized as he reached out to grab Izuku's face and steal his quirk. The boy struggled desperately to escape, but was too exhausted to summon more power from one for all. Before the villain could carry out the deed, three massive pillars of yellow energy erupted by the bridge near them. The trio of villains paused and turned to face the spectacle. The pillars reshaped themselves, the yellow churning and morphing like water and electricity until it took the form of three giant serpentine dragon heads made of the same energy. Standing atop the middle head was another Izuku Midoriya. This one was dressed in a strange black ribbed like suit that looked like nothing seen on earth. Yellow energy coursing through gaps in the suit, with an odd yellow symbol carved into the chest. All this energy seemed to be pouring from a golden gaudy malformed ring worn on the boy's index finger that possessed the same symbol. Hello. The newcomer called from atop his mount, before pointing his ring at them. And goodbye. The dragon heads opened their maws and fired beams of yellow power right upon the group of villains and captured young hero. S-H-I-I-I-T. Octopus let go of Izuku and used his tentacles to run off away from the blast. Wait. Take me with you asshole. The brain shouted losing all his calm collected composure in the face of such overwhelming power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. His container was pulled off the road and over to Doom who erected a barrier around them. However his loss of focus allowed Izuku to break free from his hold and flee to the other end of the bridge right as the yellow beams came down destroying everything. When he reached a broken dead end of that bridge, his danger sense went haywire, as if there was a vast number of enemies that wished to do him harm in front. Good evening. Another version of himself popped up from the edge. Izuku could only see his head. So, I heard you have one for all. He smirked as his body rose up, revealing a relatively normal-looking upper body. However, the lower half was a huge hideous amalgamation of body parts, twisted together into a monstrous form. Izuku paled and would have vomited at the sight if there was anything in his stomach. It looked more horrific than any Namu he'd seen. This won't hurt a bit. You'll just become part of me and together we'll be complete. His flesh spawned grotesque red tentacles that reached out for Izuku. A large ball of fire suddenly collided with him, forcing this abomination to produce a shield of crystals from his naked torso. Sneak attacks. He scowled in annoyance. Doom appeared behind Izuku gripping his shoulder, slipping right past his danger sense with an incognito quirk and freezing his body with a paralyzing one. I don't know what you are supposed to be, but one for all is mine. Doom said with the cold ruthlessness of a lord. Hey ha ha. Do you really think you can deny an apex predator of his meal? This new twisted Izuku laughed as more tendrils and limbs emerged from his hideous body. Yes, I think I do. Wind blade. Doom said apathetically as he whipped his other hand towards the interloper. The monstrous form of the body was quickly and brutally torn asunder. Apex's eyes widened, not expecting such power. As his upper torso fell off the tower of limbs and flesh, having been severed almost instantly he was hit by a powerful explosion. That attack blew the rest of him into charred pieces that went flying over the bridge where he came from. That's... Kakens. Quirk. Izuku struggled to say while trying to fight the body lock the older villain version of him kept on. Correction it was Katsuki Bakugu's quirk. Doom supplied. My world's version of him was undeserving of such a gift. I bet your version is probably the same. They heard a gasp behind them. Octopus appeared using his robotic tentacles to walk over what was left of the bridge. He took Kakens' quirk. The multi-armed villain exclaimed. Did he scream and cry? Did he break down? What was his face like? Give me details daddy. Octopus rubbed his cheeks eyes getting a delighted gleam, getting a sick thrill from imagining the scenario. Thanks for leaving me behind assholes. The brain appeared after him, rolling along the concrete. Watch it. The bodiless villain yelled as one of Octopus's claws almost stepped on him. My bad. The young villain smirked. Hurry and take his quirk. I want to try downloading my consciousness into his body. The brain demanded. Fine. Hold him steady. Doom ordered as Octopus used his incredibly strong tentacles to hold Izuku Midoriya in place. The armored villain grabbed a hold of the boy's head with both hands and used his imperfect copy of all for one to steal his quirk. 
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Don't be rude. Achako elbowed her. Sue, you're Deku from another world. She began talking to the rather quiet hooded one. She flinched when he turned that cold stare at her. His eyes seemed so empty yet there was a spark of something warm she almost recognized. You can just call me Demiurge. That's the hero name I chose. This Midoriya stated. And you all can just call me Ivy. That's my hero name. It might make it easier so no one gets confused. The female Midoriya supplied with a wink. Todoroki shifted uncomfortably next to her, trying not to glance at her revealing attire. Ivy Midoriya noticed and apologized again. Look I'm sorry. I didn't know I was in another world. I thought you were my Shoto. Wait what happened between you two? Achaka wondered aloud. My Shoto? I may have. Blumped and Ivy muttered something under her breath with a deep blush on her face. What? Nearly everyone shouted. I kissed him okay. My boyfriend where I come from is Shoto Todoroki and we kiss all the time. She answered honestly getting more flustered by the second. Todoroki looked like his brain stopped working after she said that. It's so unfair. Mina who was busy ogling the girl Izuku suddenly cried out, babbling about how the half and half guy gets all the hot ones. Until he was karate chopped in the head, knocking him out. Wow. Even the teachers along with All Might were shocked at the claim. Ivy just giggled, covering her red face. I like this one, she's cute. Mina exclaimed. All right moving on. Bakugou shouted. Just what the hell is going on here? The Bakugou I know is abrasive too. Demiurge muttered aloud. I pieced some things together from the villains' minds that I cracked open. He continued on. I think we've somehow been removed from our own individual worlds and placed in this one. I thought it was strange when I kept seeing all for one and hearing his voice from their memories when I know for a fact he's dead in my world. So the multiverse is real. Nezu said excitedly. Oh the books I'm going to publish about this. He chuckled madly. An alarm suddenly blared interrupting the meeting. That's the front gate. Nezu said. Someone tripped the censors. Are we under attack? Todoroki asked. On screen, the principal shouted. The wall opened up revealing a large monitor screen. The live front gate surveillance showed them Izuku Midoriya's face. Hello. Hi. He waved awkwardly. This is going to sound super duper really weird, but I think I'm in the wrong world. He tapped on the camera lens. Hello. Anybody there? We got another one. Demiurge Izuku remarked with a scowl. I go by villain Deku. I was wondering if we could get some help. The newcomer said. Hello. Anybody? They're not answering me. He looked off camera at someone else. Of course not. Another Izuku appeared next to him. You just introduced yourself as villain Deku you moron. Why would they let you in? Honesty is the best policy. Villain or not? The first one shrugged. God you're exhausting. The second glared at him as he approached the camera. Can you just let us in? I know you got more of us in there. I can explain exactly what's going on here okay. This is starting to get interesting. Nezu smiled. Before anyone could stop him, he pushed another button, opening the front gate and allowing these additional multiverse interlopers inside. Elsewhere. Please tell me someone can track the boy. Doom said as he sat down on a large crate. After fighting off the Midoriya who introduced himself as something called a Yellow Lantern, the three of them found an abandoned warehouse to regroup and come up with a plan. I'm tapped into the city traffic cameras. Brain began. Due to structural damage and power outages, tracking our target will take some time. Good one of you is actually useful. Doom rested his head on his fist as he glared over at his younger counterpart who was checking over his robotic tentacles for damage. Hey, who wore the hero wannabe down enough for you to capture? Octopus argued back. That was me. Are you blind or just stupid? The talking gray matter shot back. Deku was clearly already exhausted and not at full strength before we even got to him. Who the fuck are you calling stupid? His arms lifted him in the air and he stomped over to the short container. You didn't even do anything pickles. If it wasn't for me taking control of that nearby construction crane, you would have been crushed by that yellow lantern and his ring powers. Brain continued to argue. I had that handled. The claws on his tentacles clenched in fury. And what about tall dark and doomy over here? He pointed his thumb over at the still silent Doom who was busy contemplating what happened with his quirk. He tried to take one for all and fucked up royally. Be silent boy. Doom pierced him with an angry stare. That quirk was more complicated than I originally believed. He was still trying to piece together who those people inside the quirk were and how they were able to repel him. He never had trouble stealing a quirk before now. Lovers quarrel. A voice from the shadows of the warehouse suddenly spoke. Doom was on his feet in an instant and shot a blast of energy at the source of the voice. Hey now. The energy was deflected by a barrier that appeared to emitting from an umbrella. Is that any way to treat? A friend. The parasol was lowered revealing another Izuku Midoriya. He was dressed in a black pinstripe suit with a blood red button shirt underneath and black derby hat covering his mop of dark green hair. And after I went through all the trouble of bringing you three here to this universe to play with me. He mockingly pouted. You did this. Doom stared him down. Who the hell are you? The octopus turned his arms towards the newcomer. He's us, Izuku Midoriya you idiot. Brain's computer generated voice growled out. I know that pickles. The multi-limbed villain shouted. He's Doom, you're the brain, and I'm the octopus. I just want to know what this guy's villain name is. Makes this easier to keep track of. For you. This new fancy dressed Izuku just chuckled loudly at their bickering. Fair enough. He walked towards them holding his hand out in a gesture of peace. You can call me. The mastermind. Back at UA. 
Good afternoon. This mittery about politely. They call me Paradox. He was wearing a simple green t-shirt, skinny jeans, red converse, and denim jacket decorated with many pins and patches. His hair was trimmed short on the sides. Villain Deku already introduced himself, so let's just skip over him. He was suddenly glomped from behind by said villain. Skip over me. I don't think so. Villain Deku said in sing-song voice resting his head on the other's shoulder. He was dressed in black leather pants, leather jacket with the letters VD bedazzled on the back a bright pink button on his lapel that said boss bitch. Bright red platform boots covered his feet. Altogether with his hair dyed with bright green highlights made him look like a punk. Don't worry about him, he's harmless. Paradox shoved him off. The staff and students were just staring at the two slack-jawed. The awkward situation got even worse when villain Deku spotted Bakugou. His eyes lit up and with an eager grin as he ran over and jumped on him next. Takem. He embraced the explosive boy. Are you and the other me dating in this universe too? W what? Bakugou's mind sputtered to a halt at what he just heard. The entire class one were shocked at well. In my universe Kaken and I are a couple and we make sweet sugary love every single night. He whispered loudly in Katsuki's ear, enough for everyone to hear. Huh. Bakugou's poor mind completely shut down as all color drained from his body. He's lying. Demiurge suddenly spoke up, eyes glowing neon green. I can tell by his brainwave patterns and pulse that he's lying through his teeth. Fine you got me. Villain Deku released his hold over the now catatonic spiky-haired blonde. He then walked over to the couch and rudely plopped down between Todoroki and Ivy. Shoto is actually my boyfriend in my universe. He said as he placed an arm around Endeavor's son while draping his legs over the other's lap. Now it was Todoroki's brain that shut down completely. He's lying again. Demiurge announced with a glare. Fine I'm single. They're happy. Villain Deku exclaimed as he jumped from the couch. Way to spoil my fun gloomy boy. He walked over and tried to smack the white-hooded hero only to be held in place by his telekinesis. Do not. Touch me. Demiurge said dangerously. Everyone calm down. Toshinori Yagi called out. He said you know what's going on here right? He pointed over at Paradox. Of course I know what's going on. He rolled up the sleeve of his denim jacket revealing a strange advanced device that looked like a big advanced watch of some kind. Pressing on the screen, the tech started projecting images in the middle of the common room as he began his explanation. Mustafa P-O-W-E-R-P-L-A-N-T. Please excuse the mess. Mastermind said walk down the hall, stepping over exposed tubes and wires everywhere. We've been really busy repurposing the energy plant. He twirled his umbrella by the handle as he strolled along. Hume followed behind him at a distance with the octopus beside. Brain was carefully carried by one of his tentacles. They entered what looked like the main generator room. The core of the plant was exposed, showing the clean renewable source of energy that once powered the city. Some sort of machine was being built in front of it, suspended by metal girders and cables connecting from the walls. A long decorative table was set up close to the machine, with fancy chairs surrounding it. Mastermind rushed to sit at the head of the table, tossing his hat and umbrella away and gestured for them all to also take a seat. What is this? What are you doing here and how? Doom started as he took his chair to the right of the head. T first. Mastermind Izuku exclaimed excitedly as he randomly pulled out a tray from underneath the table with a steaming kettle and a bunch of cups. Yummy. I could use a drink. The octopus sat down across from Doom, leaning forward so his tentacles had some space. He placed Brain's metal skull-faced container gently in the chair next to him. Mastermind placed three cups on the table and poured some tea for himself, Doom and Octopus. Ahem. The Brain made a noise, pretending to clear his non-existent throat. Where's my tea? Monsieur Mala always pours me a cup first at every one of our meetings. Oh dear. My apologies. Mastermind's smirk was as patronizing as his tone. Pouring another cup he reached over in a mocking dramatic display, placing it in front of the talking gray matter. That's better. The Brain didn't sound pleased though. How do you even drink tea like this? The octopus laughed at him. It's the gesture I like you fucking asshole. His digital voice box screamed out. The two quickly devolved into childish bickering. What have you done? Doom ignored their arguing and turned his attention to the one who caused this multiverse phenomenon. I'm so glad you asked. Mastermind sounded gleeful. With a little science, combined with forbidden knowledge, I've figured out a way to travel to other universes. I've done the math. This shouldn't be possible. Brain ceased his bickering with the multi-armed lunatic and joined in the conversation. And yet the proof is sitting right at this table. Mastermind chuckled resting his chin on his folded hands. I didn't do it alone though. He stood up from his chair and pointed at the space underneath the half-finished machine. There was nothing there at first and the three villains thought he was just crazy when suddenly in the blink of an eye a figure appeared standing there. His face was shadowed by the black hooded gold-hemmed robe he was wearing. Underneath a plain black suit and tie. When did he get there? Octopus frowned getting creeped out by the uneasy feeling the figure gave off. I call him Eldritch Izuku. Mastermind made a thunderclap noise with his mouth when he spoke the name. My new BFFAE, best friend forever and ever. I told you I don't like that name. The Eldritch Izuku walked towards the table, his feet not making a sound. Just refer to me as God. That's what I evolved into after my ritual was complete. Before it backfired and trapped you in oblivion. Mastermind shot back with a cheeky tone before sitting back in his chair. Eldritch Izuku stood next to him. 
So these are the ones that are going to help us accomplish this. The one who referred to himself as God spoke apathetically, who said we are going to help you. Brain spoke for the three of them. The tea in front of Doom suddenly started boiling and exploded to get everyone's attention. You still haven't answered my question. The armored villain said with steel in his voice. Just what have you done? Mastermind's grin widened further as the section of the table in front of him opened and there popped out a control console. Welcome to Multiverse 101. I'll be your teacher, Mr. Mastermind. He chuckled as he pressed buttons. A hologram appeared in the middle of the table getting the three villains' attention. First things first. The multiverse doesn't exactly work how some people assume. Mastermind began his little presentation. Diagrams showing branching paths in the hologram illustrated his point. Yes, there are infinite universes, but the differences in those universes are limited by the choices themselves. Doom, the brain and the octopus, being geniuses themselves could understand what he was explaining. Think flipping a coin, it can really only go two ways. Creating a limited path. The branch on screen went only two ways. They get it. Tell them about the finitus branch. Eldritch said impatiently. I was getting to that. Calm your fairy wings. That joke was only understood between the two and lost on the other villains as Mastermind had seen his true form. This is what we, and by we I mean myself and my new BFFAE, call a finitus branch. The hologram displayed a line that hardly every branched outwards and even those few splitting paths seemed to head towards the same direction. This is what a normal person's branching paths in the multiverse look like. As you can see the choices they make are surprisingly limited. The result is that if you could travel to different universes like my cute self, you'd find that almost every person you knew is more or less the same in each universe. Maybe a few differences here and there, but otherwise the same old angry spiky-haired Kakan. This is Izuku spat the nickname with Venom. Doom listened to his explanation and noticed a problem with it. That being the fact that there were currently five versions of Izuku Midoriya in this room that were each radically different from the other. Now this dot 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 is an infinitus branch. The hologram illustrated a path that branched out in every possible direction, like a tree. Once a millennia, Eldritch Izuku began. Someone is born. An anomaly in the flawed and perfect fabric of reality. This anomaly isn't bound by the laws of the finitus branch and has every possibility open to them. Any choice by itself or by others could send this anomaly down any path, creating a vast variety of that individual within the multiverse. In case you haven't figured it out yet, Mastermind started only to be interrupted by the armor-clad 19-year-old man. We Izuku Midori are that anomaly. Doom realized, oh that's so cool. The octopus bounced in his chair excitedly. We're the most special person in our worlds. Take that Kakan. HM. Despite the explanation, a common hatred for Katsuki Bakugu seems to reoccur among us. Brain deduced, admitting his own hatred for the explosive blonde boy. I also dislike Himiko Toga. Octopus Izuku admitted. In fact I just finished slapping her around with my tentacles to relieve some stress before I was warped to this world. Oh god, don't remind me of her. The brain sounded annoyed at the mention of the girl's name. She's part of my brotherhood of evil, but personally I find her fake schoolgirl voice and personality excruciating. What about you Doom? Do you hate her too? The tentacle-wielding villain asked. Himiko Toga does indeed work for my organization. Doom supplied while crossing his arms. However her usefulness has been running dry lately. I'll probably just kill her when I go back, after obtaining one for all. Yes, we all hate Toga. Mastermind Izuku interrupted. Let's get back to me and my plan I call, Operation, Universal Apocalypse. Apocalypse, that sounds sweet. Octopus grinned as he rested his head in his hands. Oh boy it is. Mastermind pressed a button on his console. Funny thing about reality anomalies like us. It really isn't a good idea to put a bunch of us in one universe. The hologram showed a simple illustration displaying space-time with several cracks running through it. Because when you do that dot 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 this happens. Doom was the first to figure it out what his overall end goal was. You're going to destroy this universe. Rip it apart at the seams until nothing's is left. The armored man realized. Yup. Mastermind's face was lit up with the excitement of a madman. An entire reality. Obliterated. The hologram showed a video of a large explosion going off startling a few of them. Back to UA. Someone has brought us all here in an attempt to destroy this universe. Paradox Izuku said after the long-winded explanation on how the multiverse operated. His own hologram projector from his wrist device provided the illustrations to help the teachers and students understand this. Too many drastically alternate versions of myself existing in the same reality will cause the fabric of this reality to basically shatter like glass. Villain Deku used one of the nearby folding chairs to break one of the windows startling everyone. Yeah like that. So how are these versions of Deku different? Katsuki said having recovered to the assault on his mind a few minutes ago. Sure they dress different. I'd like to know that myself. Nezu said as he took pages and pages of mental notes. Name your quirks go. Paradox pointed at himself. Time manipulation. He pointed at each of the other three. Plant control. Ivy said. I can control all forms of plants, even at a genetic level. To show this several yellow vines grew from her long fluffy hair, wriggling around like tentacles, going across her slender toned body to wrap around her wrist. Manipulation of all things. Demiurge spoke emotionlessly. I can lift, move, and shift all matter with my mind. They classified it beyond S-rank telekinesis where I come from. 
He didn't bother demonstrating as several of them had already seen it and he didn't like showing off. Quirkless and proud of it, villain Deku shouted boldly. See, paradox continued. Katsuki Bakugou. What's his quirk and what is he in your universe go? Mine's got explosion and he's a student here at UA. He's got an explosion quirk. My plants don't like him, but he is top student of my class 1A. The female plant controlling Izuku admitted. Same quirk, same class, same hot-headedness. Demiurge said without enthusiasm. Kakin has the coolest explosion quirk ever. Villain Deku gushed. He's the best in all of UA. And he's got the sexiest toned ass I have ever seen. He said while fanning himself with his hand. Oh no dot 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 my brain. Katsuki's eyes went white again as his mind went back to off mode. Hiroshima and Kaminari burst out laughing. A villain version of Midoriya that had the hots for Bakugou. There was no way they were ever letting him live this one down. See what I mean by anomaly. Paradox was starting to regret using these weirdos as examples. Especially if the villain one was going to keep acting like this. You're paying for that by the way. Vlad King said, pointing at the broken window. Send the bill to my universe. Villain Deku taunted. Bitch, it's just you four though. Toshinori looked at Demiurge, Ivy, Villain Deku and Paradox. How can just four cause such a catastrophe? Actually it's much worse than you think. The time manipulating Izuku sighed. His watch began projecting images. Whoever did this brought in a bunch of villain versions of us. There can't be. Achako started. Vidi was more of a goofball than an actual villain. I'm afraid so. Paradox sighed regretfully. Oh cool, more like me. Vidi chuckled. No, not like you at all. From what you've told me about yourself and your little ragtag group called the League of Villainous Evil. Some of the students giggled quietly at the silly name. These guys are straight up more evil than you could believe. For the past few days I've been sneaking around observing and cataloging some of them. The first image showed what looked like a madly grinning Izuku with goggles, black and green jumpsuit with six robotic tentacles attached to his back. This one is called Octopus. He's quirkless too, very dangerous and extremely mentally unstable. Young Midoriya. No, Tashinori stared at the boy's image. He looked so much like the Midoriya that he trained and passed his quirk to, but that psychotic smirk just did not belong on his innocent face. It gets worse. Paradox continued. This one is called Doom. The next image showed a tall figure in a suit of advanced technological armor with a green hooded cape adorning him. From what I overheard, he's a bit older and possesses a defective copy of the quirk known as All for One. Oh no, Tashinori said reflecting what everyone else in the room was thinking. I wasn't able to learn what powers he has unfortunately. Next, the third image was a three-foot metal cylinder with a skull face and dome on top showing a brain. This one refers to himself as the brain. Some of the students snorted and chuckled at such a dumb obvious villain name. Oh you think that's funny? Because from what I was able to hear from his many boasts is that he's killed a lot of innocent people, as well as pro-heroes in his world. that shut them up. His intelligence is very high and he has some sort of device fitted to his cerebral cortex that lets him access and control technology. Paradox Izuku slid the photo over to show the three villains together in the next one. These three have met each other and decided to work together. Why would they do that? Nezu asked, from what I was able to gleam after eavesdropping. Doom wants this world's Izuku for his quirk. He didn't say what that quirk was. They know about one for all. Tashinori supplied. That makes this easier. Doom wants your Izuku's one for all. The octopus just wants to fight and prove he's better than him and the brain wants to take over his body. Somehow. So that's it. Achako glanced at each version of Midoriya and added the three other villains in her head. Still didn't seem like enough to shatter a universe. Did you see the yellow one? Demiurge suddenly spoke up. I encountered him early on while walking through the city. Yeah I was getting to that. Paradox showed them all the next picture. It looked like Izuku in a strange black and yellow alien type suit with yellow energy shooting from his ring. He appeared to fighting another Izuku whose lower body seemed to be made up of various insect limbs, fleshy tentacles emerging from his back. His right arm was actually the large head and neck of the pro hero Ryukyu in her dragon dorm, reaching out to try and bite the other Izuku. I didn't get close enough to hear anything so I don't know much about these two. I met him, Demiurge explained. He said he was something called a yellow lantern. I don't know what that is, but when he tried to attack me, I sent him flying through several buildings and he vanished. That was when I suspected something wasn't right with the world I was in. I got attacked by the monster one. Ivy spoke up next. He kept referring to himself as the apex predator and then I'd die and become part of him. I threw my plants at him, but he just absorbed all my babies. I was barely able to get away when I ran into Shoto here. Okay so we have Doom, the octopus, the brain, villain Deku, Ivy, Demiurge, and we'll just call these two yellow lantern and apex. Paradox summarized. Plus there might be more out there that none of us have seen yet. And we still don't know who's done this. Tashinori reminded them that they had yet to figure out who the mastermind behind all this was. Exactly. Paradox snapped his fingers, turning off his device. How did you get here? Go. He pointed at each of them again. While Shoto and I were stopping some of those villains who escaped from Tartarus, suddenly there was a flash of light. I'm in another part of the city and my boyfriend was gone. Ivy explained. Todoroki blushed again at being reminded that alternate universe him was dating this female version of Midoriya, who he could admit in private to himself was very pretty and cute. I had just finished slaughtering the Metal Liberation Army like cattle. 
Demiurge said without remorse or emotion. I was wandering the woods, looking for a place to rest and then a flash of light, I'm on a random city street. The students and teachers were deeply disturbed to hear him talk about killing villains so casually. Then he wondered what would turn him into something like this. While well, Shinso and I were playing Elden Ring while we wait for all for one to attack our base of operations. We were so close to beating that bitch Malenia. Villain Deku summarized. Flash of light and blah blah blah. Paradox boy with his cool denim jacket found me and we came here. I'm guessing you got here the same way. The principal asked the time traveler. Actually no. Harry and I were hanging out in 18th century England when my timepiece detected ripples. Paradox explained. That shouldn't be possible so I dropped my little sister off back home and followed these ripples. That's when I encountered the cracks of this universe. Normally my quirk doesn't allow me to travel into other universes. But thanks to those very cracks that are destroying your reality I was able to slip in. But aren't you making the problem worse by coming here? The small white animal said. Yes and I apologize for that. However I'm one of the few people who kind of understand how the multiverse actually works. I've had experience after all. Paradox sighed again mentally exhausted from all this. My archenemy is an alternate version of myself with the same time manipulation quirk. He calls himself Destiny. He also understands the multiverse, probably more than I do. Do you think this guy Destiny is behind this? Toshinori hoped there wasn't another evil young Midori out there. No it's not him. Destiny is much more crafty and subtle than this. Paradox Izuku admitted. He uses many go-betweens and minions to set things in motion. Oftentimes when terrible things happen around me I have to wonder if this is even him. This catastrophic event is not his style. Too grand, too loud. He rubbed his chin in thought. Whoever is doing this wants to make a big spectacle out of it. As to why they would destroy a universe I have no idea. And back to the villains. Why would you do this? Part of Doom didn't care as it wasn't his universe getting destroyed. But at the same time he was curious. Why? Because I can. Mastermind hissed out. You see it's been my dream, my ultimate goal, to kill myself in the most spectacular way imaginable. The other villains excluding Eldritch were surprised by this. I want to go out with Bang. He stood and raised his hands in the air. I want to burn in the fires of a disintegrating reality. Interesting. The brain didn't get it, but he liked it. Wow dark. Even the octopus couldn't wrap his head around wanting to commit suicide like this. My original plan back in my world was to get All Might to kill me. That didn't work. Mastermind shrugged in disappoint. I would have been the first and only villain to ever be killed by the number one greatest hero ever. Now I want to be known as the villain that destroyed an entire universe. I'll definitely be remembered for that. Oh I can assure that you will be remembered for that. Eldritch Izuku said next to him. An act like that is something the very gods will take note of. And what's your role in all this? Do mask the black-robed villain. Simple. When this universe is gone, I'll make a new one in the emptiness he leaves behind. He said so casually as if it wasn't any problem at all. Wait he can do that. Octopus raised his eyebrows in surprise. I have to call BS on that too. Brain agreed. If you're that powerful, then what do you need us or this suicidal maniac for? Oh, uh, therein lies the problem I'm facing. Mastermind tapped his fingers on the table in frustration. Let me tell you a story. About a young villain. A villain whose ultimate plan to die at the hands of the number one hero was recently foiled. He then spends his time working out a new plan. He starts experimenting with highly dangerous teleportation technology. He tests it on himself, because what does he have to live for anymore? Can we guess what happens next? Something went horribly wrong. Doom said getting tired of this younger over-the-top version of himself. Correct. Instead of being teleported to the coordinates, I ended up zapped into what's known as the Abyss. Mastermind whispered the last word loudly for dramatic effect. What's the Abyss? Brain asked. It's the subspace between universes. Mastermind pulled out a flashlight and held it on underneath his face. A dark void of nothingness. Picture it. I'm just floating in the vast empty. No up, no down, only total darkness. He flipped the torch off. I thought that was the end. That I would die here. Not remembered. A quirkless nobody in the pit of oblivion. Suddenly a light appeared, illuminating the abyss. There floated a living god in all his glory. My new BFFAE. He pointed to Eldritch Izuku who just continued to stare at them emotionlessly. Back to UA. Paradox and Nezu had gotten a large white board into the common room and were currently trying to figure out a solution to this problem mathematically. They had scribbled out lots of complex equations and had taped the printed out pictures of the villain Izuku's all around. Most of the girls of class 1 were hanging out with Ivy, chatting and asking about her world and her quirk. Just one kiss. Villain Deku was currently giving this world's back with the bedroom eyes. Full on the lips, lots of tongue. Just let me get it out my system. Hell fucking no. Katsuki exploded. Please. I have such a huge crush on my Kakan, but my Kakan hates me. Villain Deku begged. I hate you too. The blonde growled out, igniting his palms. Oh come on. Throw him a bone. Ashido argued. There's no judgments here. Fuck off. Bakugou stomped away. How about you Todoroki? Villain Deku turned to him next. I got a huge boy crush on you too. One kiss that's all I ask. He licked his lips and whispered seductively. Lay one on me hot and cold stuff. I'm going to. Respectfully decline. Todoroki scooted further away from him. 
While villain Deku was bothering everyone, Achako snuck away to sit next to the one called Demiurge, who was quietly sitting in the corner away from everyone else. You seem very reserved, the gravity girl said. She noticed he kept glancing at her the whole time he was here. I prefer to keep to myself, Demiurge said quietly, while observing Paradox and Nezu arguing about quantum physics and trying to alter each other's equations. So you, killed people. Achako remembered what he said and what he did to the villain in front of them. It deeply bothered her. She just couldn't see Deku as a killer no matter what universe he was from. I wouldn't call them people. Demiurge argued without looking at her. They were villains. Monsters that don't care who they hurt or for any of the lives they ruin. His tone was filled with so much hatred it didn't sound right coming from Midoriya's mouth. The Meta Liberation Army especially. They wanted to use and manipulate me, just like all for one. They got what they deserved and so did he. He almost flinched when he felt her softer hand touch his horribly scarred left hand. Achako's fingers trailed over the burn marks that went up his wrist and probably further up his sleeve. May I ask what happened? She wanted to know about the burns. It's nothing. I ran afoul with Dabai of the League of Villains in my world. He got me when my guard was down. He said staring at his marred hand. I'm sorry. Todoroki who overheard their conversation apologized. He's my older brother. On behalf of my family you have my. This Midoriya interrupted him. It's fine. I got him back by ripping out all those stupid staples in his skin before trapping him in a barrier of his own flames. Demiurge explained. You killed him. Todoroki paled at that. My world's version. There was only a charred skeleton left after I was through with him. He said so nonchalantly. He too got what he deserved. Achako tried to hold his hand, but his fingers refused, using his powers to move her hand away from his. Demiurge turned and finally faced her. There was so much pain in his eyes, so much suffering, but she could see that tiny shard of warmth when he stared at her. You're just like her dot 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 just like the Achako that I know. She also wasn't afraid to get close to me. His voice was so soft now. His face was so close to hers. Achako went bright red. The implication of what he might be getting at. Wait is he and his world's me dot 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 are they? Her thoughts were halted when the doors to the common room burst open. Where's my son? And Cole Midoriya came rushing in. Her watery eyes landed on Demiurge first and saw the face of her boy, even shadowed under that hood. She ran forward and pulled him off the couch and into a hug. Demiurge's eyes widened in pure shock, mouth slightly parted as he lost his voice. Hey mim mom. He whispered with a stutter. The room went quiet. That was the first hint of real emotion from Demiurge they'd seen. He gently placed his arms around as tears started to well up in his eyes. What kind of cruel dot 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 sick dot 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 monster his voice went from sad to angry so fast it was giving everyone whiplash. Demiurge removed himself from the confused woman's hold. Would bring me to a world where my mother is alive and well. He stomped towards the doors. Where are you going? Achako got up and tried to follow him. I'm going to find and kill whoever did this. Demiurge's voice was oozing raw fury that even she was scared. Now just wait young man. Tashinori grabbed his shoulders to stop him from leaving. Get off me. His quirk distorted his voice as the building shook. The gaunt man was forcefully shoved off by an invisible push. They're not going to get away with this. Demiurge continued his march. Not like anyone could stop him if the power he displayed and talked about was anything to go by. In his mind whoever brought him to this universe wanted to taunt him. Why else would they dangle a living version of his long dead mother in front of him? Welp he's gone. Villain Deku broke through the awkward silence. Izuku and Ko was confused seeing another version of her son dressed like some sort of punk rocker. Hi dead mommy. Been a while. He smiled and waved at her. What did you just say? Tashinori snapped at him. My mother died of illness. I moved on. Villain Deku shrugged. The old part of him might have cared, but without his mother around he eventually stopped taking his medication which finally allowed him to be his true self. Judging by his reaction, I think Demiurge also lost his mother. Todoroki deduced with a sad frown. Did you also lose your mother? He asked Ivy. I never knew my mother. I lived in the forest for as long as I can remember. She explained. Some heroes found me and brought me to civilization. Ivy went over and handed the crying Inko a box of tissues. She may not have known the woman, but she hated to see her cry like this. What is going on? Inko asked as she dried her eyes. She finally noticed the fourth Izuku by the whiteboard with the principal. The teachers and students went on to explain the very bizarre situation. Meanwhile Paradox was rubbing his temples in frustration. This just doesn't make any sense. The time traveling Izuku said as he stared at the board. Even the most brilliant minds couldn't figure this out. Destiny is a genius, but he couldn't do something like this either, definitely not on this scale. Maybe someone smarter. Nezu supplied. No, not smarter. They wouldn't just need knowledge of cross-dimension quantum physics. Someone would need to have an extremely intimate knowledge on how the multiverse works. Almost as if. Paradox's eyes widened in realization as he ran over to the brown leather messenger bag that he carried in with him. He fished around for a bit, pulling out a strange solid black 3 inch by 3 inch cube. What is that? Nezu asked. Everyone was looking at them now as they waited for Paradox to explain. There are things you people could barely imagine. Monsters that exist in higher and lower dimensions. He stared at the cube. These things in this cube are called entrophers. They're parasites that come from the fourth dimension. Nasty little things. You're serious? Tashinori asked skeptically. I have to deal with them every now and then. 
These things feed off potential time. Paradox went on. Once in a while someone on their deathbed dies a few days earlier than they were supposed to. The entrophers slither out of the fourth dimension to feed off all the leftover time that person was supposed to live. I get it, Nezu said. Do you? Paradox spoke sarcastically. Unfortunately for me, my quirk makes me a time-space anomaly. Which means all my potential time is infinite. Which means that I'm like an all-you-can-eat boof to them. Oh, Nezu is starting to properly understand. Yeho. Luckily for me because of my quirk I can use what they come for against them. Paradox smirked as he pointed at the cube. When one of these sharks come I trap them in one of my timeless stasis cubes. I can create these with my quirk. I've lost count how many I've imprisoned in here. Are they still alive in there Nezu asked wondering what one of these entrophers looked like. Don't know. Don't care. Don't want to open it and find out. He smirked before tossing the cube back into his bag. What are you getting on? Tashinori pressed on. My point is that there are beings that exist in other dimensions. Paradox lectured. The entrophers are bottom feeders. They are the lowest in that food chain. The higher you get the more intelligent and powerful entities you find. So you think one of these entities would of course understand the mechanics of the multiverse in a way no human does and use that to create this cataclysmic event. Nezu concluded for him. Exactly. Paradox exclaimed. The part that's scaring me though. For what reason would they do this? The villains. A god huh? Octopus side eyed him. He doesn't look like much. This is just what I used to look like when I was human. I'm connected to this Izuku's consciousness, projecting this image and my voice through him. The rogue Midoriya told them. While I was able to get this Izuku out of the abyss and into this universe I myself am still trapped there. You claim to be a god yet also admit to being trapped. Doom scoffed at that. There are things even above me that I pale in comparison to. Eldritch spoke scornfully. Yeah you see this how the cosmic hierarchy goes. Mastermind began making a ladder with his hands. It goes animals, then humans, then old ones, then gods and at the tippy top we have outer gods. My BFFAE falls into the god category, but there's an outer god in the abyss that's keeping my homeboy trapped there. So what happened to you? Octopus asked the projection. In my universe I came across an artifact that contained secrets not meant for mortals. Eldritch began his story. An ancient tome some people referred to as the Necronomicon. Within it were instructions to for a ritual to summon forth outer gods. If you manage to summon the right outer god and make the right accord with the right sacrifice, you can be granted what you desire most. And you did this, Doom said as he watched the, until now stone-faced projection, smirk darkly. Yes, I summoned my outer god and committed to making the largest sacrifice. Eldritch then glared forward disdainfully. However those insufferable heroes interfered and disrupted the ritual before the sacrifice was complete. At the time the great Yogg-Sothoth successfully evolved me into a god. It held up its end of the bargain, but when my end fell through as punishment I was dragged into the abyss where it resides. Even with my new divine power I was no match for the almighty will of an outer god. So you're essentially bound in this void and that's why you're projecting yourself through him. Doom summarized. You can't cross over into other universes like we did. This is what we're working on here. The mastermind pointed to the unfinished machine. That is a big version of this. From underneath the table he pulled out what looked like an advanced gun of some sort with wires leading to a device meant to be worn on the back. My original portal device, modified for cross-dimensional bridging. From the device he pulled out a power core that looked like a three cubes within each other. This little gizmo is something Eldritch here helped me design. This is what makes multiverse transportation possible. He chuckled. I used it to power the portal gun here and it will also power the big portal gun over there. With it I'll be able to extract my BFFAE from the abyss, particle by particle. I can't just walk through a portal. I need to be extracted carefully. Eldritch explained. Once I've been fully reassembled in this universe there's nothing Yog sothoth will able to do. We'll use the portal generator to bring in a vast quantity of alternate Izuku Midorias, destroying this universe, killing everyone including them. Then I'll remake this universe, but with my own designs and laws. Mastermind let out a loud evil laugh as his partner finished. That's where you three come in. He went on. Next to me and Eldritch here you three are the smartest Izukus. I need your help to finish my dot 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 let's call it a doomsday device. He giggled manically. Give us one good reason that we should go along with this suicide pact of yours and not just kill you right now. Doom said as he stared the boy down. Because Dr. Doom, mastermind taunted. I can help you get this world's Izuku and my BFFAE can help you get his version of one for all. Brain wants to download himself in that Izuku to have a body again, Eldritch can do that with his god powers. Octopus here just wants to take him down a peg. Yes that is true. His metal claws clank together in excitement. I'll help you three get what you want and I'll return you to your respective universes, before I implement my big universe destroying suicide. Mastermind stood up, waiting for them to accept. Do we have a deal? Wait, back up, your full name is Dr. Doom. Octopus Izuku said, pretending like he didn't listen. His closest allies call him that as a joke. Mastermind supplied. Are you in or not? Dr. Doom. That has a cool ring to it. The tentacle villain smiled. I want to be a doctor too. Call me Dr. Octopus. He suddenly gasped, eyes wide in realization. Doc Ock. Oh that's catchy. Call me that from now on and I'm in. Fine Doc Ock. Mastermind happily agreed. You have no idea how much I want a body again. 
Screw this universe and this world, Izuku Brain said. I'm in two. You're the last one, do me. The villains looked to the older armored one. Fine, but if you try to double cross me, I won't hesitate to kill you. Doom threatened while agreeing to his offer. Oh, you really know how to give a bad boy the chills, don't you, Doom? Mastermind hugged himself while shaking in perverse glee. Speaking of chills, I suppose I should introduce you to the last member of our little team. As he said that someone entered the core room. This figure was dressed in a gray long coat, body suit. A circuit-like pattern of tubes covered the suit filled with neon blue liquid. The gloves were fingerless revealing pale white ringers. The collar was raised covering the mouth area, and a fishbowl-like dome helmet covered the head. They couldn't see into it as the inside was so foggy, but they could make out a silhouette of messy hair and red glowing lenses over the eyes. Sit down with us, won't you? Mastermind offered a cup. Have some tea. I prefer to stand. His voice echoed inside the dome. Say hello to Izuku Midoriya. Or as his world's media has taken to calling him. Mr. Freeze. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Mastermind cackled like the mad villain that he was. Unknown location. Izuku panted as he finally stopped to hide in an abandoned grocery store. His body hurt. He was so tired, hungry and confused. He didn't know what was going on. He flinched feeling his ribs. That one with robot tentacles must have fractured them. Izuku's mind was still trying to comprehend what happened. There were five other versions of me. He said aloud. He tried to steal one for all. Nana Shimura spoke in his head. His version of all for one. It felt different from my brother. Yoichi said next. Like it was incomplete despite all the quirks shoved into it. Suddenly the danger sense went off, buzzing like crazy. Izuku spun around fist raised. Whoa calm down. The figure was dressed in ragged, stitched together tight gray jumpsuit. Dark green hooded jacket, and a mask looked made from a gas mask and burlap sack with a grinning face painted on it. Izuku was immediately wary of the glove on his left hand that had tubes leading to syringes attached to the fingers. I've been following you. Your name is Izuku Midoriya Wright. That's my name too. He removed his mask revealing an identical face. I'm a hero named Crow. Really? Izuku lowered his fist. His outfit seemed pretty intimidating for a hero. I saw your fight with those other ones from a distance and followed you. Just what is going here? Crow spoke calmly and rationally, making Izuku lower his guard even more. I don't know. They just showed up and attacked me. Izuku told him honestly. He winced as he felt his ribs hurt again. You're injured. Ribs it looks like. Crow realized, watching him clutch his chest. Hold on a sec. He ran off through the store to look for supplies. I can bind them for you. I have medical training. He called from two aisles away. Izuku was still unsure of him. His danger sense did warn him at first, but wasn't doing anything now. To reassure him Crow removed his syringe glove letting it dangle by his side by the tubes connecting to it. Izuku decided to trust him and slowly removed the top of his jumpsuit. Oh dear, those scars. Crow Izuku commented. You've got some miles on you. He chuckled dryly. Elsewhere, in a dark alley, pieces of burned torn flesh slowly reassembled. A skeletal structure, followed by organs, muscles and finally skin formed out it. Izuku Midoriya, the apex predator stood naked in his human form. Clutching the brick wall, he heaved vomiting up fluid from his stomach. Becoming unstable. Too much loss of biomass. He choked out. His skin and hair was starting to turn pale white, bubbling and sliding down as if he was melting. I was so close to one for all. So close. Apex thought to himself. He started panting as he felt his body start to give out. Damn that armored bastard. I didn't think he had so much power. Should have waited and gathered more info. He chastised himself. Izuku didn't like making such foolish mistakes. He was the top of the food chain after all. He should always be stronger. What he didn't see was the villain sneaking up on him. An escaped former inmate from Tartarus. He saw the naked teenage boy and decided to have some fun. Hey there cute thing. The villain pounced on the boy, wrapping his arm around his bare muscled chest from behind and pressing his body to his back. Using his quirk he turned his other hand into a blade and held it to his throat. I've been in prison for some time now and I'm looking for a good fuck. He kept a tight hold on the boy who had yet to respond. Maybe he was scared. But he liked the scared ones. You got a nice ass. He then licked the side of his face. You taste good too. I wonder if you'll taste good. Apex Izuku finally spoke. What? His victims didn't usually say things like that. That was when he noticed the flesh on the teenager's chest was rapidly crawling over his arm, trapping and now slowly absorbing his own flesh. What's happening? Stop it. He tried cutting the boy, but his bladed arm was also pulled into his body. The villain screamed as his flesh was slowly absorbed and consumed until there was nothing left and Izuku was once again standing there alone. As I thought, terrible taste. He smirked as his skin and hair regained its color and his flesh became solid and stable once more. That's better. He licked his lips as he started making plans to find and absorb these other versions of himself and gain their power. Yue, we need to find young Midoriya. Tashinori spoke, reminding them all of what their original goal was before they ran into these other versions. He's out there alone and at a serious risk. Yeah, he's basically got two all-for-ones and a bunch of evil Izukas out there hunting him. Paradox said calmly as he ate his lunch and pressed away at the device on his wrist. He was trying to scan the energy signature and find out what kind of interdimensional monster was doing this. How can you be so careless about this? Inko asked the time-traveling version of her son. 
I'm sorry I'm trying to figure how to save your universe. I don't exactly have the luxury right now to worry about another version of me when there are trillions of lives at stake. He realized he was accidentally talking down to this universe's version of his mother. I'm very sorry. His device went red and beeped loudly. Now I'm double sorry. I'm guessing the red flashing light means bad. Villain Deku guessed. Super bad. Paradox clarified. How bad is super bad? Mezu asked. The energy signature behind this event. My timepiece finished analyzing it. The time traveling Izuku sighed. It comes from a god. A god. Everyone said simultaneously. Gods exist now. Unfortunately there's nothing I can do. Paradox confessed regretfully. He then began stuffing his things back into his messenger bag. Wait there has to be something. Toshinori stopped this Izuku, waiting for an answer. I've only ever seen an interdimensional god once before. Eri and I had to watch it lay waste to a civilization. He explained, reminiscing those horrid events. The memory still haunted him of that thing that looked like some sort of big arachnid that had the brutality and ruthlessness of one as well. And you did nothing. The former number one hero said with shock. You Izuku Midoriya, with a time-manipulating quirk did nothing. It was a god. There was nothing I could do. Paradox argued. I tried, believe me. He stood up to make his point. These things, these entities don't have any rules. Matter is Plato to them. Space and time are meaningless. Laws of physics are just options. Mortal humans like us, even with our awesome quirks, we are just insects to them. The time traveling Izuku sighed again as he rubbed his face. So our universe is doomed then. Nezu realized with a sad frown. So much life and raw data was going to be lost forever. Look I'll stay with you guys to end, but when it happens I need to leave. Paradox didn't sound like he wanted to do this, but had no choice. I promised I would look after Eri, my Eri. I can't just abandon her. How long till it happens? He really hoped to see his Midoriya one last time and apologize for not killing all for one when he had the chance years ago and making him clean up his mess. Probably when the rest of the evil Izukas get here. Villain Deku shouted. Everyone gave him an annoyed look that said shut up. What? This god thing probably wants to get all the villain ones like me together to create chaos as one big misdirection while he blows up the universe. Stop talking now. Please. Tashinori gave Vidi his first warning. Wait. What did you say? Paradox marched over to his ridiculous doppelganger. Didn't you figure it out? Villain Deku cocked his head. I thought you were the smart one. Seeing him about to demand answers he explained. It's pretty obvious. Doom, Octopus, The Brain, Apex, Yellow Lantern, me. Everyone in the room was still not getting it. Really nobody else. Then again I'm the only here that is a straight up villain, so I think like one. Get one with it. Bakugou screamed, lighting an explosion with his palms. Okay, don't get your boxers in a twist, not before I get to them. They were all growing increasingly more frustrated. That creepy demo urged me. He said he killed people right, and that that he killed the MLA. Whoever brought him here, probably thought he was a villain based off that. Paradox's green eyes widened. He then ran over to Ivy. What were you doing again before you got zapped here? He asked the female Midoriya. I said I was rounding up escaped villains with Shoto. Ivy clarified. How? Paradox demanded. Plant pheromones. I used them to make those thugs fight each other. She then explained thoroughly how this aspect of her plant-based quirk operated. Despite looking so pretty, Ivy had intelligence to boot. You know if I was a third party witnessing that. Villain Deku smirked wrapping an arm around her shoulder. I would think you were a villain. Oh yes. Paradox chuckled. Do you know what I love about evil villains? Seeing nobody could answer his question he elaborated. They always make a mistake. All for one, and even destiny. They all make a dumb decision that blows up in their stupid faces. He typed away on his device. I'm not following. The gaunt former hero was confused like everyone else. Gods don't make mistakes. Paradox smirked. Whoever did this might be using the power of one, but they screwed up by accidentally bringing two heroes here. That proves how sloppy they really are. His watch gadget beeped three times. Gotcha. Did you find something? Nezu asked. Indeed. Their dirty fingerprints all over the place. The time-traveling Izuku was elated at this discovery. Sloppy. 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 They really thought all these evil Izukus would cause enough of a distraction that nobody would track their sloppy work. His device projected a bunch of figures no one, but Nezu really understood. We can track these energy signatures to a location. The talking animal proclaimed. If we can get to whatever this person is using to create this phenomenon, I might be able to reverse it and save your universe. Paradox finished. Young Midoriya is still in danger. Tashinori reminded again. We need to split into groups. We'll go find Deku. Bakugou suddenly announced. The students all nodded in agreement with him. We were on his trail when we ran into Demiurge. We can get him. Abandoned grocery store. There that's better. Crow smiled pleasantly as he finished wrapping Izuku's chest. You should still get that looked at. Did you go to UA like I did? You can get that fixed there. I can't go back to UA. Izuku said regretfully. Not yet. He stood up from the stool and wobbled on his feet almost falling to the floor in exhaustion. Why not? Crow asked. I noticed a severe lack of sleep and I bet you're not eating properly are you? He said like a disappointed parent. You can tell me. And you remember. He sounded so sincere. Izuku couldn't help but open himself up to this kind other self. He told Crow everything. Everything that happened. 
about his mission to find and defeat all for one as well as his hope to help save Tamura Shigaraki. Wow, Crow smiled at him. You're very noble. You have the heart of a real hero, but you can't destroy yourself like this. I have to. Izuku sounded like he was trying to convince himself rather than his doppelganger. How are you going to face this when you can barely stand and fight? The hero Crow argued. Maybe you're right. Izuku looked down at the floor. He sat back on the stool. You're so noble. Crow said again. Izuku didn't see him put his creepy mask back on. So very heroic. Nor his syringe gauntlet back on his hand. So very trusting. His voice was now being muffled by his mask. Izuku's danger sense went off immediately. His head shot up only to get a blast of some green gas in his unprotected face. The young hero coughed and fell over, aggravating his inured ribs. W what? Izuku's vision was starting to blur and darken. The abandoned store looked like it was burning around him. Oh dear me. Crow chuckled maliciously as he stalked over to him. I didn't properly introduce myself. Izuku's eyes widened as his senses went crazy and his pulse started to race. My actual name is Scarecrow and no I'm not a hero. The opposite in fact. The now revealed villain followed his prey as he crawled away from him. Izuku panicked as vivid hallucinations appeared off everyone he cared about dying around him. Scarecrow slowly walked towards him, his image flickering from himself to all for one stepping over the dead bodies of his friends. What's the matter Izuku? Scarecrow laughed maliciously voice distorted and demonic. Are you scared? With his syringe gauntlet covered hand he smacked a bunch of products off the shelf towards the boy. Izuku shrieked and scrambled away. The hallucinations becoming worse and worse every second. I think you might need a stronger dose. This evil Izuku went to stab him with the needles. Deku quickly countered by aiming his own hand at the other. Channeling the power of one for all he flicked his finger at him and fired an air bullet point blank. Scarecrow almost dodged it. The attack grazed his side. However he wasn't the target. What? The ceiling suddenly collapsed on top of him. With his strength Izuku was able to get out of the collapsing store. With his speed he quickly took off, looking for a safe place while the city around him melted away into a nightmarish hellscape that only he could see. From out of the rubble Scarecrow crawled out. Slowly getting to his feet he dusted himself off, humming a tune to himself. Run little rabbit. He whispered from behind his mask with a sinister tone. Scarecrow walked down the street in leisurely pursuit, still humming that tune. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if villain Deku did multiversal travel. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Lord Wolf for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfic for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.